Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. LDS scriptures are unique in the fact that they have been used to enforce a priesthood and temple ban on black members of the church. In our next conversation with Noel Bringhurst and Dr. Matt Harris, we're going to talk about why the race and priesthood essay falls short on that particular topic. Check out our conversation. Just just a couple of general observations about the uh race and priesthood essay. I, I mean, I, the, uh, as, as, uh, as Matt has uh, very effectively pointed out, the, uh, the inherent uh, aspects of Mormon racism as articulated in Mormon scripture is nowhere even mentioned or discussed in the uh, race and priesthood essay. I mean, it's all the the whole underpinnings is Brigham Young being influenced by the racism within the larger American society. And to some extent, uh, Lester Bush was making a similar case in his seminal uh, essay that was published in Dialogue in 1973. He made a deliberate effort to, because he was a believing Latter-day Saint, Believing in the you know the the veracity of Mormon scriptures and and Mormon you know Mormon scriptural writings, be it both the Book of Mormon and uh, you know the Pearl of Great Price, the Book of Abraham, the Book of Moses, and uh, I I thought that was one of the major failings both of Lester Bush's uh, initial study, and of the uh, and carried over in the uh, race and priesthood essay itself a failure to acknowledge that at the root of Mormon theological writings was this uh, a belief that dark-skinned people, be they blacks, be they uh, uh, Indians, were divinely cursed with a dark skin. And uh, that's likewise been reflected in uh, the volume of uh, uh, of saints that I went through. I thought one of the weakest parts of that uh, that volume was the way it handled the issue of blacks and the priesthood and that. It just, uh, it, 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 you know, and, and standing in sharp contrast to the way it handled polygamy, which was more frank and much more open, I was really disappointed with the way that saints handled the issue. And, 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 and it's almost like an echo of the omission that's in the gospel topics essay you're talking about the saints volume one or two or both two volume two, two. okay because it, you know the way it handles you know said so, well it it, it, it acknowledge that it started with brigham young but uh you know i haven't gone back and read volume ones so, you know where you talk about blacks actually holding the priesthood but you know it it it, it just like jo uh, brigham young all of a sudden decided to, to to deny blacks the priesthood, nowhere acknowledging the theological underpinnings as contained in uh, essential church writings in the Book of Mormon and in the uh, Book of Abraham and Book of Moses. See, that's, that's really interesting that you would say that, Newell, because um, I have to say uh, there's a podcast, there's the Saints podcast. I don't know if you guys have listened to it. Uh, Mark Staker, Dr. Mark Staker was on, I'm, I'm trying to look it up on my phone here. Um, I believe it was episode five. I think it's called Bad Down to the Grave, which I think is a terrible title. Um, let me make sure that's the right one. Yes, Mark Staker, that's one. Episode five from the Saints podcast. He said some amazing things, and that's put out by the church, by the way. Um, he said that church leaders made mistakes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm listening to a church <laughs> podcast. I cannot believe they said that. S say that again, Noel. Yeah, I didn't uh, 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 Uchtdorf uh, say the same thing that the, 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 uh, the church had made mistakes? I think he well, said the same but thing. This was... Isn't that kind of... Yeah, I mean, sort of, but this was directly talking about the blacks and priesthood issue. Um, oh, a staker was. Staker was, yeah. And so I was just like, oh my gosh. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna mention that if you guys can go listen to. I still don't know why it's called "Bad Down to the Grave." I think that's a terrible title because if you actually, I'm gonna read the uh, thing here. It says, "This is 
The date on it says January 23rd. In today's episode, Mark Staker helps illuminate the history of early African-American members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he talks about Black Pete, and he talks about uh, Elijah Abel, if I remember. Um, but I will just mention, I mean, I, I listened to that, and I was like, oh, my head was going to explode, because I couldn't, because I because Mark was very open, and, and Mark's been on Mark's been on my podcast before too. We we talked a, a lot about Black Pete, so I will I will tell people that's a fantastic episode. I apologize. That was one of I think it was my second or third one ever. The audio's terrible, um, <laughs> but but that was a. I mean, Mark has some. Mark's done some amazing research, especially on Black Pete, um, and also and I don't know if you guys have noticed have heard this. Uh, he's got that great book. I don't have it nearby, but. Um, about Ohio, and he he sure, said in my yeah. interview yeah. that he thought that Black Pete introduced polygamy into the church, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, because Black Pete was a former slave, um, and uh, and so the slave uh, polygamy was popular in Africa, and it was it's really interesting. I, I, I'm just going to recommend. I know it's a really it's one of my earliest interviews. The audio is not that great, but um, go back and listen to that because I thought Mark said some amazing things, not only in my interview but in that Saints podcast as well. So I want to make one last uh, point about the scriptures and race, and that is the the Book of Mormon. Um, the scriptures don't talk about black people really. It's it's interpreting these scriptures. Um, they read blackness into some of these curses. I think that's an important point to make. And the other point is the Book of Mormon, of course, talks about Lamanites or Native Americans. And so when people talk about curses in the Book of Mormon, they're talking about, you know, Lamanites and, and so forth. But the point I want to make is, is that Black Latter-day Saints, um, when they read the Book of Mormon, when they're, they're in the process of conversion, for example, or even after they've been baptized, they read these Lamanite curses and they wonder, as a black man, how does this apply to me? And it's really, really a tough issue for the church to deal with because these racial tropes are all over, the, uh, especially the Book of Mormon, when you get this racial fluidity. And so it's a really challenging thing for the church because really, if you were to rewrite these verses, I mean, you're going to end up taking a pretty significant chunk of, of Scripture out of the Book of Mormon. So it's really a tough situation. So I want to acknowledge that in the Race and Priesthood essay, I don't know what the answers would be. I'm not sure how you would even explain these away, because the it, it's, a really, it's, a, it's a real thing when you look at what the verses say and how the leaders interpret them. And there are some apologists for the church that just contort themselves into pretzels, trying to make sense of these curses. It just means your spiritual soul, or it means animal skins, or any number of bizarre things. And But really, when you look at what some, not all, but when some of the brethren are saying in private about these verses, I mean, it's very clear that they think there's going to be a literal transformation of, of skin uh, change. And also, it's very clear that in the 1950s and 60s, Latter-day Saints interpreted it as such. And let me give you just one example that at BYU in 1969, there, was, there were a couple of students that were doing some research for an English research paper. And they did a survey in which they asked both faculty, students, and people in their local wards about skin, dark skin turning white. And overwhelmingly, these two students who did the two surveys, I think there were two surveys, that the majority of their, uh, the people they surveyed thought that there was going to be a literal skin change from Negroes, as they put it in those days, to white people. And, and it was pretty darn clear. One of the person, uh, do, people doing the interview, he said, after he compiled the data, he said, this is what they said, but I'm not really quite sure how that works. I mean, he's musing about skin color changing, right? And anyway, and then Elder Kimball in 1960 gave this, this really controversial general conference sermon, which he talks about, um, this is all over the internet, so it's, this is anything, you know, that I'm bringing to light for the first time. But he talks about um, the Lamanites and how some of the Lamanites left the reservations and lived with um, some of the Latter-day Saints under the Indian placement program 
And he said, you can look at after they left the reservations and converted to the church, their skin color turned lighter. Compare them with the people left on the reservation who didn't leave. They have darker skin. And he shows up uh, visuals in conference, like people can see the pictures. He actually shows pictures of the Lamanites who left and the Lamanites who stayed. And I remember interviewing with his son years ago, um, the late Edward Kimball. And I said, tell me about that, that address. <laughs> and uh, Ed Kimball said, my father took a lot of heat for that because people... <laughs> They write, today, I guess they write emails, maybe. But in those days, they write letters. And a slew of Latter-day Saints, they just said, this is crazy. You don't lose your skin, your skin tone, your pigment when you move from one. Anyway, and so Ed Kimball, we talked about that. So this is a, this is a racial trope that, that really is out there for a long time. And of course, by the night, after the 1960s with the Civil Rights Movement, when the church uh, when the leaders are really, really careful about how they come across to the public about the church's race teachings. 1968, the First Presidency said, let's no longer talk about the curse or the less valiant theory in public because they don't understand. Anything we say about blacks, let's keep it clear, positive, and brief. That's what they said. <laughs> and um, so the, they didn't abandon the teachings. They just said, we're not going to represent those teachings to a journalist, for, for example because they won't understand it. And so by the 1970s, after the priesthood revelation, the brethren start to look, look a little bit about some of the racial uh, teachings that the church had accumulated over the decades. And they, this is when they try to tamp them down a little bit. And you see that throughout the 1980s and into the 90s. They're doing little subtle things um, uh, uh, in terms of scriptures, um, and some other things. And so by 2013, the culmination, of course, is the race and priesthood essay in which they denounce, you know, interracial marriage and curses and things of that nature. But they don't deal with the scriptures. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Newell Bringhurst and Dr. Matt Harris. In our next conversation, we're going to jump back to 2012 during Mitt Romney's run for president. BYU professor Randy Bott made headlines and not in a good way in a Washington Post article. Um, Randy Bott is well-respected BYU professor, uh, made a fateful mistake in the spring of 2012 when he opened up his door to entertain a Washington Post reporter named Jason Horowitz. And I interviewed with Horowitz actually. And I said, oh, uh, really? yeah, yeah. I have him on. I have him on record. I quote him in my next book. For those of you who are interested in the entire interview uncut without any interruptions, sign up at patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview for just five dollars a month. Also, we have other tiers. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe on our website at gospeltangents.com, click on the yellow subscribe button and you can uh, subscribe for ten dollars. You can also do that on Patreon and uh, get a PDF transcript. We've also got uh, some other ones uh, for $15 and $20 if you'd like to get those as well. If you're interested in individual transcripts, go to Amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents Interview and you can see our past interviews there in paperback form. So uh, just check out Gospel Tangents. We're always updating those. For the latest updates on Facebook, go to Facebook.com slash Gospel Tangents and you can see our latest updates there. We're also on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. Of course, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. And please uh, give us a five-star rating uh, for those of you who listen to audio only. So once again, thanks for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again.